All right, let's get it. Now we're going to talk about map functions in per. And so, as always, it'll be elite. I'm gonna load the live, shout out to PJ Fleck. I'm gonna load library tidyverse. And per is a package that comes with the group of packages tidyverse. And then to have an example, I've just written this to give us some a list to play with. And so the first thing is, let's find the mean of each element. So if I look at my list, it's a little bigger. What I'm basically saying is I want to find the mean of these three numbers. I guess one, two, and six means to the sum of nine divided by three. Three, the mean of these three numbers, I think it's four. The mean of these three numbers, it should be five. And so what I can do is I can always pull out the first set of numbers by doing the weird double square brackets. And it's like up above your comma and quotation mark sign. And I can do the mean. And similarly, I could copy and paste that and get that for the second set of numbers. Similarly, I can copy and paste that and get for the third set of numbers. It's a lot of typing and a lot of work to get this three, four, and five, but it does the job. I pull out the first vector, second vector, third vector, the things in the list, and find the mean individually. Um, so, but the basic idea of a map is what I did here was I applied the mean function to each element of my list. So my list looks like this. I found, I found the mean of this, the mean of this, the mean of this. Other way we can do this is say my list, think of the map as saying, apply the, fu apply the function I'm giving you to every element of the list. So map, and then I'm gonna give it the function to apply to every element. So pipe, my list goes into map, and we're applying the mean. And I do that, and I get three, four, and five. And this was a heck of a lot simpler than this. Now, I wanna do an aside just to make sure we're understanding the how we're using the pipe. Remember, the pipe puts something as the first argument. And so these two things are equivalent. This is this written without the pipe. I like the pipe because it says my list gets put into map and then we're gonna map mean. But this would also give us the same thing. And similarly up here, I could have written like mean of my list of one. But I like using the pipe, so I'm gonna use that consistently. So just a quick side on the pipe, just so you're remembering. So this was great, right? This was one very easy. I found the mean of each element. Now, this is returning a list. And that seems like a little much for all I have is three numbers. And so you could think, well, I could probably get away with, I could just have a vector. It could just be three, four, five in a vector. And so that's the idea of a specific map. So this was the of a general map. So the specific map, we're gonna write the same thing. We're gonna say my list, we're gonna say map to apply the same function over and over again. But now I'm gonna do an underscore. I'm gonna tell it the type, what I expect back. So there's a few things I might expect back. I might expect back an integer, which would be map underscore int. I might expect back double, which would be underscore dbl. A double is any number that's not an integer, something with decimals, for example. I might expect back um, a word, which is chr, which stands for character or a string. But here, I'm gonna expect back, you could do an integer, but I don't know that the mean is always gonna be an integer. It happens to be in this case. So I'm gonna do map underscore double. And then again, I'm gonna tell it which function to apply. And so that's beautiful. Map underscore double returns a vector of doubles and gave me the mean. This is the mean of the first element, mean of the second element, and mean of the third element of the list. Um, just a quick touch on quickly an anonymous function. I have a supply it with this function mean, but there's no reason I couldn't do something else. So let's say my list, let's say I wanna make some function. I don't know, let's say I want to double each number. And so you're always gonna do the tilde first. And then period stands for what's in the list, the elements of the list. So I'm gonna do period. Let's say I wanna just multiply each thing by two. So I'll do the times two. Shift eight gives me the snowball, the asterisk to, to do multiplication. And so this is an anonymous function. I've written a function to multiply everything by two because there's not like a name of a function. There's not like a multiply by two function. 
And if I do that, I basically get all the lists re returned. I've just doubled each of the elements. Now, what if I were to do map double? It gets confused, right? Because map double only, it wants to return a single vector. And so with me, and that was fine because I had a three, a four, and a five, just list them. But now I have three elements in each. And so it doesn't know how to convert this kind of list structure into a vector. And it tells me that. And so when I'm going to return a list, I need to do that. And so we can talk about a few of the other maps I had mentioned. So let's do, let's say my list, just to remind you what it looks like. My list is this one, two, six. There's a function called is numeric, which basically just tells you if the elements are numbers. And so one, two, six, yes, they're numbers, so it should be true. Four, seven, one is numbers, so it should be true. Nine, one, five should be numbers, so it should be true. And so I get true, true, true. Well, instead, I can use the map LGL. It's logical. Logical is a true, false. And so then I get true, true, true. I could also, if I'm expecting a character string back, if I'm expecting words back, so I can do the same thing and do, but now it's gonna, this returned it as a true, like object, RC's true as being an object behind the scenes. Now it's returning true as a character. And so that's just to show you that as I'm expecting different things back, I can use the underscore and give it the type that I'm expecting back. So map is general. It will always work when you want to apply a function to each element of a list. Map underscore something only works when you're going to get one vector back, which comes from getting one value when you apply the function. And you need to kind of be smart about what, what you're getting back. Not like, for example, it's always going to throw me a list if, what if I do map? What will happen if I do map int? I get one, one, one. It's a little confusing because true underneath the surface is stored as one, true is one, false is zero, and so it returns that one, one, one. But in general, you want to stick to something that's a little bit more obvious, so do the map LGL probably for this case. But that's the very basic idea of the map. Should get you up and running, should get you the chance to play around, and you can look at all the other sorts of things. There's map two, there's other per functions. Um, but you can play around, but you should have a very basic idea of what the map function does and how it's nice to apply things over lists to make something like this, which is tedious, very, very simple, and you can do really powerful things um, with short lines of code with per and with these map functions.